also going to say something. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Rebecca. In our group, I'm the I'm the other Rebecca. So I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, She's going to be Bex. Bex, because it's right. just easier. Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, Bex. Bex. That way we're not going to get confused. So um, I do a thousand things. Um, nothing really for money. I just kind of help out people and do whatever. But um, I am a seamstress by trade. I make clothing, gym suits, curtains, whatever. Um, so basically the backstory to me, I have a little clothing company where I make things and sell them. But um, my backstory is that I, I've had an eating disorder since I was nine. Um, two years ago, I lost all my teeth because of it. So uh, going, I think having an eating disorder and knowing that there's lifelong consequences with, is always in your mind. But when people start talking about dentures, when you're 35, it's a problem. <laughs> so I really just became dedicated in uh, wanting to increase awareness about eating disorders, about the, the re serious lifelong consequences of it. I mean, like I had an eating disorder, lost my teeth and, and physically couldn't eat anymore because I had no teeth, right? So there's a whole big generation of, of people like myself that are coming along and the lifelong health consequences are really detrimental as far as osteoporosis, bone loss, the teeth loss thing is huge. Um, so I started a little side business within my company um, selling the t-shirts that I brought for everybody today. And it's, it really is just an awareness campaign um, and just giving support to people who might have gone through this. The shirt we came up with um, is empowering and I've had people who are like, oh, we do an MS run. We want shirts for everybody in the MS run. So it doesn't necessarily have to be about eating disorders, but ultimately within my little t-shirt business, I'm raising money to give to local eating disorder programs. But hopefully, um, I, I've kind of set a five year building timeline for myself as far as creating awareness but what happens is, is is that awareness campaigns can only go so far and then you need to do something so like the ice bucket challenge created a ton of awareness and then what happened nothing really like nobody knows what happened after that the bell let's talk day same thing portions of that money go all get collected through all these text messages but there's not people aren't seeing the action behind it so I've kind of set a five-year awareness campaign goal and then I want to look into starting to get some facilities and treatment centers going for uh, people with eating disorders following along with sort of the Alcoholics Anonymous model where people can go to groups and talk to therapists and families can come because we are so 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 um, under resources within like the whole world really like England's got the same problem I have a few ambassadors in Australia that I'm dealing with and have 65 beds in the whole country. Like it's not, it's not okay. And people are gonna be really, it's gonna get really bad for people dying of this disease before they're admitted somewhere. So just trying to get some resources in place to deal with the sort of influx that's gonna be coming up over the next probably 10, 15 years of people dealing with the lifelong consequences of, of this. And I mean, it's ironic that a lot of this is gonna be probably caused by social media and kids, mm -hmm. our kids getting onto That's social yeah. media, that we really need to sort of create a positive um, community with on there to allow people to know that it's okay to be themselves, really. Um, so that's kind of like where I'm at. Um, I struggle with it sometimes because when I came out with my whole story last year, on Instagram it was really public and a lot of people were like oh like we knew you had a problem but we didn't know how bad it was or and then it just started flooding my inbox just started flooding with people who were like I have the same issue I can't get help I don't know what to do I don't know where to turn to I don't know what I'm supposed to be who I'm supposed to be talking to my doctor won't see me and I really became overwhelmed with the response um, and it, it kind of jeopardized um, I don't like to say my recovery because I'm fighting every day but it kind of compromised that a little bit so I had to kind of take a step back just to be able to be okay and Candace and I talked a lot about this but for my brand um, it's really important that the people that are representing my brand are authentic people um, you know I yes I've had plastic surgery and I don't not 
like I don't I don't want to say I have a problem with that but I just think that my brain needs to present people who are real people that are not hiding from something that are not trying to be somebody else and like I'm just trying to live my best life and I, I want all of the ambassadors that are sort of in, in my group to be doing the same thing that's it that went on